tribute by the wife, Nana Kanedu Adjaman Rawlings, wonder at the world. We skipped along with heads held high. Our flag of hope unfurled. Enthusiasm filled up. But then our path grew steep and rough, and clouds obscured the sun. Who troubled times to ease the hurt away. With caring hands and gentle touch, it helped us through each day. So as the road goes winding on, step bravely mile by mile. Just as the poem states, we started on a journey, one that was free and easy in spirit. I was innocent and you were streetwise. There was so much I did not know and understand about the real life out there roof. I had to learn to understand how to be streetwise, move along with the flow of your friends and acquaintances, but it still did not sit well with me. It went against all the upbringing I ever changes its spots. I was who I was based on family values. I decided I could not change for the sake of love. You finally understood me to take me as I am. Snooty. I refused to accept that. I said it was based on my values. We had our ups and downs. However, our foundation of love for each other kept us together. We got married, but it did not sit well with me, and I said no. And you very quickly told me you were just tricking me to see my reaction. Family was very important to me. That is all I knew. So it looked it wasn't a military wedding because of your disillusionment. There are several reasons we send girls to school. But when you get married, you advised you to encourage me in my endeavors because I tried. It was not easy, but I knew I had you as my son all morning cleaning the house and doing all manner of chores before I asked too tiresome or bothersome for you as you sought to take care of your young family. The store, which meant let the darkness in. Intelligence culminating in the historic trial after the May 15th uprising. Quote Iris Hilsudden, but then our path grew steep and rough and clouds obscured the sun. As problems raised their worried heads, we indeed lost our sense of fun. Our little oasis to an open refuge for all manner of people that believed in your Yah Santwa. It felt like the nation would enter our apartment, strangers and friends, visions we had for the children. December revolution started. With all the difficulties, improvements to the national economy were clearly visible, and I would bring the girls over to visit on weekends and fortnightly. They never could hold back their excitement. Give me your eyes and ears to what was going on around the country. You trusted in the integrity and support we were able to make the fight for women and children's rights a reality with the passing of the instruments to your concern for your nation when you were made aware of the difficulties women were facing in the country. You never hesitated assiduously on empowering the Ghanaian women. I knew my passion to transform the lives of women could become a reality. I had dreams of improving the lives of the urban poor communities. They totally disagreed with my style. I changed lanes like a sports car pushing past two trucks driving side by side. I decided to move from the north to the south, east to the west of Ghana. Reports got to you that I was disturbing the People's Defense Committees. After listening to my rationale, you gave me a thumbs up in fields. With all the opposition I got within the PNDC government, only one male appointee supported me, BBD Asamwa who urged me on with the women's programs I was doing, since they hold half of the sky. So their empowerment will reflect on how the children in Ghana will grow and develop as well. To raise my own funds, if I felt the cause was important enough, I went all around the world. But I know that God created us for each other. We believed in each other and in our dreams. I dare say we did not do a bad job. As you worked as irrespective of their origins or creed. We were a team heart in my own way. You always said you did not need titles to define you. So you remained flight lieutenant. For most, you remained chairman. To me, you were and always will be Jerry. My love, my life. He's the kaleidoscope of the rainbow. 
the rich gleam of the fox's fur, the shy gaze, the whisper in the wind, the song in the rain, a day, an eternity. Rest in perfect peace, my love. May you Wife, Nana Kunedu Adjiman Rawlings, read by Princess Amina. Um, come on. It's by the children. And it will be read by Honorable Dr. Zenato Adjiman Rawlings. After Rawlings. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing but the perpetual folly of mankind, always thinking there's more time. This has been so unexpected that translate dotes where to begin. Jeremiah, whose mission covers named you Jeremiah. You knew your purpose to the essence of who you are till your last day, because resonating within you was an organic understanding of a name's sacred sin to that name. You knew this. You did not name it. A warrior's label was thus your gift, and reveled in each name lay your challenge to us to be watchers, never to falter, to stay grounded, to seek our purpose and remain true to us seas. A name you made up and gave to your first child during the difficult Santua of Asante extraction in modern day Ghana. You named her after Nana Ya Santua of Ejisu. You named her after the warrior queen society. Kimathi of Kikuyu extraction in Kenya, uprisings that led up to the independent struggle against the British colonial rulers and Africanism. Perhaps it's no surprise that you created a bridge between members. Perhaps at our earliest memories of the giant, for many, a dashing lady love by your side. Oftentimes, we would only see you on weekends as you would traverse the country nonstop, never tired, always heavily concerned with the countries and of the people, your people. They were a part of you. Three times a week, for many years, with a first on your lap, when our fingers could barely grasp the steering wheel, was your second love, flying. Experience the wonder and majesty of the Creator by conquering fear, mastering your skill, and trusting that you would create skydive after age 50. You were an artist at heart. Your portrait pencil sketches, but a preview of your natural echo in the house, reflective of yours and your wife's artistic abilities. You were highly intuitive and perceptive and spent time with each reality to global geopolitics and more. Whenever we asked you a question, at other times, you would just offer a candid opinion in a few concise statements and move after years of exposure to it. When it was time for us to go to boarding school, you took pride in setting up your barber's shop on the compound of the house, who just as well before hacking our cousin's hair to the most shocking yet hilarious spectacle. You and mom would always ensure that you visited in Achmota and the mischief that you got up to, defying gravity with each flight. You've been among the clouds, you were an artist, fearless recklessness. Mundanity of life to challenge even at the risk of standing alone. We economic system on the plight of people of Africa. Live your life, make your mistakes, and most importantly, never let your feet leave the ground. Armed forces, the precision of our Air Force, not just for oneself, but for one's fellow Ghanaian in the face of adversity, and of course, Let's not forget the incredible your shortcomings. You always thought about the health and well-being of others before yourself. And it's such a shame that not every individual got to see or experience that about you. Of numerous students telling your family to squeeze in the car while you gave countless strangers a lift on the motorway. Since your passing, 
we have been inundated by testimonies father, grandfather, sage, friend, daddy, thank you now, so walk briskly and purposefully as you do among the ancestors. You will always be our warrior. And it will be read by Al Haji Udu Yahya. After which. Tribute and principles is him in just a few paragraphs. This has been stretches over four decades. This tribute gives us the opportunity to say only a few things during institution that epic to promote progress for all especially he hated exploitation of ordinary people his towering image charisma irrespective of their status and literate and to restore led to their arrest we saw a manifestation of his selfish to sacrifice his life for others standing trial with him he offered to carry all was the trigger for the uprising of june 4th 1979 up the rocks in the ghana army of now uprising for restoration of places and seek accountability program of return of the country to multi his conviction that ghana could nation and commitment Ghanaians who were deported back to Ghana. All the deportees were being received at the Aflau, Sankasi and Tatale borders, Tema and Takwade harbors, and Kotoka International Airport, with medical facilities, psychological counseling, and transport to the respective towns and villages of the deportees. He was committed to reverse the socio-economic state of the country from a country of shortages and queues to a country of plenty. Queues became a thing of the past, and most Ghanaian professionals began to return to help build their country. Black markets in respect of dealings in foreign exchange by Ghanaians, control prices, and Kalabuli became things of the past. Inflation was brought down, the import license system was eliminated, and economic liberalization became, for the first time after independence, Ghana's economic system. Ghana's exports revenue began to soar, and diversification of the economy was also pursued vigorously. The economic and social infrastructure, which had largely broken down due to years of neglect, underwent serious rehabilitation. Under him, electricity from Akosombo was extended to all the then 10 regions of Ghana. The then 110 district capitals and towns and villages which accelerated development in Ghana. The road sector underwent expansion to the rural areas and the ports in Takrade and Tema saw rehabilitation and expansion as well as our airports at Kotoka, Kumasi and Tamale. The educational system was not left out. The grammar type education, which was inherited from our colonial masters, was changed to the junior secondary school, JHS, and the senior secondary school, SHS. Public universities were increased from three to six. The medical school in the north at UDS, University of Development Studies, was added to the existing two at Kolibu and Konfonochi. The policy of each region having a polytechnic was ruled out to address the middle manpower requirement for the development, for the industrial development of the country. Several political landmarks were achieved in the decade that the 31st December revolution lasted. 
Among these are the reversal of the economic decline of the early 1980s, the restructuring of the state institutions, political stability, the mobilization of women under the leadership of Her Excellency Nana Konedo Ajiman Rollins, the founding, the founding of the National Democratic Congress, the building of the foundations of the current Fourth Republic. Given that Rollins meant the PNDC was a provisional administration, he ably guided and tailored the process of transition to the constitutional rule that began in Ghana in 1992 and has since endured. The process created the opportunity for the founding of the National Democratic Congress to help consolidate the values that Jerry John Rawlings had always espoused. Since his message over the decade resonated with the ordinary Ghanaian, he easily won the first and second general elections in the Fourth Republic with the party he founded, the NDC. Perhaps it is appropriate to state here that His Excellency President Jerry John Rawlings signed the party's manifesto with his blood at who to signify the deep faith he had in the party to the principles which he believed in. Indeed, many of the persons that served in these administrations of the AFRC and PNDC have held different positions in the NDC and are still loyal members of the party. The role of President Jerry John Rawlings as the founding father of the NDC is immortalized by Article 5 of the NDC Constitution and states the founding father of the National Democratic Congress is Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings, upon whose vision and leadership the party was established. On the completion of his two terms as president in the Fourth Republic, President Jerry John Rawlings took up the position of the chairman of the Council of Elders of the party and did not stop advising and admonishing the party until his unfortunate passing on November 12, 2020. As a party, his death is difficult to bear, and a huge vacuum has been created that will be difficult to fill. To fill. But we are consoled by the fact that his legacy of establishing the most enduring democracy in the, count, in the history of the Republic of Ghana bears testimony to the principles and values that pushed him into the political life of Ghana a little over four decades ago. Ghana, Africa, and the world have lost one of those rare leaders who did not put personal aggrandizement over service to the people and nation. President J.J. Rollins was a leader and a true son of Africa who was a peace builder in Africa. Ghana was the first country, the first African country to move into Liberia to, to stop the carnage during its civil war. Then to Sierra Leone and Guinea with its own resources before the international community joined in. Under Rawlings, Ghana was in Rwanda during its civil war, where one over one million Rwandese lost their lives. And when all the international community, including the United Nations, withdrew their personnel, President Rawlings ordered our troops under the command of General Anidohu to stay on and save lives. The United Nations appointed him as a peacemaker in the Somali conflict to bring the warring factions in Somalian conflicts to the negotiating table. President Rawlings, we owe you gratitude for helping in the founding of the NDC, the National Democratic Congress. And we assure you that we will uphold your legacy as long as we exist as a political party. Your kind is rare, and we are proud that we have benefited from the fountain of your vision and wisdom. May God grant you, may God grant your soul eternal and perfect and peaceful rest. 
and may the F gently may, may the F gently lie on your remains. Fare thee well, our leader, our former president, our chairman of PNDC, our chairman of AFRC, our founder, and our chairman of Council of Elders, Head and Yue, fare thee well. Thank you. Hachi Hudu Yahya of the NDC, one suspected general.